I'm in my spaceship. Rue is with me, my white tiger. And we're looking down on Earth. And it started, like, I started getting a little emotional just because I've always thought that the Earth is so beautiful. There's just no place like Earth where you can create and you can you can have so many different experiences in one lifetime the evolution that you could have is so great and it's so beautiful and just looking down on earth it feels like earth has just like this glimmer and this sparkle about it like even the soul of earth is just so beautiful she's just such a beautiful planet she just her light just radiates outwards and it's so beautiful Are there any, do you hear anything? Are there any sounds on the ship? No, it feels really quiet and very peaceful. You look up in the sky. Do you see any stars in space? Yeah. You look up in the space and see if you can float up to that star. I'm going to ask you to do something that might sound a little strange. I want you to float up to that star and sit on it. Tell me what that would feel like to sit on a star. I feel like, so I'm sitting on our sun and it feels like so I was told recently, Thoth showed me recently that um, the moon represents our conscious mind and the sun represents the unconscious mind of this reality. So by connecting to the sun in this way, it feels like I'm connecting to the unconscious mind of this reality. It actually feels really cool. <laughs> wow. Is it comfortable? Yeah, it feels very warm and it feels really big. It feels like I can feel everything all at one time. Beautiful. It, it also feels powerful. It feels like the power that I've been needing to connect with. They're telling me to connect with the sun. Oh, because there's power when we tap into our unconscious. I want you to tell me the very first thing that you see down there below you or the very first impression that you have as you come back down to the surface. Are you coming off of the sun yet? Yeah, so they're showing me that I've been a star before in the past. And I had, like, I was the consciousness of a star. And I had, it's like I'm the star looking on the planets that, that evolved around me, which is so much love. Do you? get a sense of what star you're in like what galaxy what part of the cosmos you're in no it's a star that no that died off that no longer exists so they're not they're telling me the name will come later but they just wanted to show me that I have I've mastered the unconscious projection of this reality before. And so um, in this lifetime, that's what I'm going through now. I'm really working through my unconscious 
And it's just so interesting because interesting because this is even in my birth chart that I'm here to work with my unconscious mind. And so that's what they're showing me now is that like I can tap in to being a star of being like the unconscious projection of realities. And I can understand how our unconscious is really creating this entire reality for us. And that I was the unconscious projection for multiple different planets. And that's how, that's how my soul, it's like, um, my soul is so evolved <laughs> that I've been a star, I've been a planet, I've been, and that's how I'm able to have so many different aspects of myself. Mm -hmm. And looking back at those lives as a star and as a planet, what would you say was your lesson or purpose? Just to be the light. Like, they're telling me just to be the light and to... They're showing me the way that all of the, of how all of the different planets rotate around a star to create this beautiful divine order of all things. And this beautiful divine order is what brings together the unconscious and the conscious of different planets and star systems it's so beautiful it's like to really tap into that divine flow and order of the universe and of all things beautiful and as a star in that lifetime what would you say your function was if you had one be the light and to project the light so that it could create realities. So mm -hmm. stars use their light to project realities for other planets. And we're there now. And what do you see? So right before the session, um, in my mythical goddess tarot deck, I pulled the fear card. And so I'm asking them what the fear car card meant or like if it's trying to tell me what kind of fear I'm holding on to so the cards that I got I pulled three of them I got fear as the first card then I got alchemy and then I got forgiveness so there's some kind of fear that I can alchemize through forgiveness but I haven't figured out what that fear is and that card like really came into my mind as we were drifting on the sun. Well, let's explore that thought on the sun and see where it takes you. Um, can you tap into that? Yeah, so it feels like I'm back in like the same bedroom I had when my addiction was at, a, at its worst. It feels like I'm back in that time and space. And I still don't know, like, what they're trying to show me, though. It will clear up. They said fear of letting go. Mm -hmm. Do you get a sense of what it is you're afraid of letting go? I think that just, like, the role that I'm stepping into is just completely unfamiliar to me just because my reality before was so different and things in my life has changed so quickly and I've really taken those like quantum shifts in my life there's still that part of me where it feels like by taking these quantum shifts by stepping into my power I am having to like let go of everything from my past and everything that I have always known to be my truth mm -hmm. so it's like being ready 
to let go of all of that. And they're saying that it's not even letting, it's not even that, like, that, those still existed, like, those memories are still true to me. It's not like it's just all disappearing and going away, but they're just saying turning those experiences into wisdom instead of feeling attached to them. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that I can still bring the things with me that I want to bring with me. So, like we said earlier, I've just always loved, like, heavy metal <laughs> and rock music and uh, wearing darker clothing and things like that. And they're saying, like, still express yourself. Bring the things from the past that you want to bring with you. And just the things from your past that are no longer serving you, turn those into wisdom and change your perspective of the way you see these things. I know the higher self could have brought forth many different lifetimes for Sierra to see today. You chose forward to bring this life for her to see. Why did you pick this life? A lot of emotions and just as some of the shadows that she's been holding around her addiction it's time to release those distortions it's time to let those distortions go forgive yourself and not be afraid of how others view you um it's also learning that like if all the people that you have in your life loved you in the depths of your addiction then they're gonna love you the same or just always be there for you while you're in your power so being in power makes her uncomfortable being in power feels uncomfortable for her and that's why it's so important for her to start healing these distortions around her addiction so that she can forgive herself and fully be in her power. And when did these distortions, um, when did they first start appearing to her? When did she start getting these thoughts? They're there from childhood. So these are things that have really been ingrained in her, like programming that has really been conditioned in her. That That's why it's all coming to the surface to be healed now so that she can release this is she storing this anywhere in her body yeah so they said a lot of it is in my sacral um and that's why I actually had it it's interesting they're showing me this because um one of my questions is like how do I release the density in my sacral mm -hmm. because no matter how much healing I do no matter how much breath work no matter how much light language I do on myself, there is always been density in my sacral. And so they're showing me that like the way to release this is releasing all of that like guilt, shame, worthiness, just any of those final distortions that I have around my addiction and just like truly learning and believing that the beauty of this lifetime was the addiction. It's just interesting because I never looked at it as a fear. I never looked at forgiving myself as something I was afraid of. So mm -hmm. it's just like another interesting perspective that they're showing me that mm -hmm. Like, what am I afraid of? What am I truly afraid of releasing? Or why am I afraid of releasing the distortions around my addiction? Yeah, so all of this is just very new for her and unfamiliar. And so it's really stepping into unknown and just trusting and just knowing that there was never anything to be afraid of and what will she notice after this session just the lightness like this feeling of content within herself just knowing that it's okay to let this go that she doesn't need to carry this with her anymore 
it's okay that it happened in the past and the duality the polarity of it is what makes it so beautiful and has the Sierra fully understand now to where we can clear this and release this for her so that it doesn't come back. Yeah, so we're just shining orange light into her sacral, just releasing this, letting yeah. it go. And then there are just a few scenes from her addiction that we're shining light onto and we're showing her just saying that it's okay to release this and let it go. That in that moment, she was truly making the choice that she thought that she had to and she needed to. And so it's okay to let it go. Like, it's okay that that was the choices that she made in that moment. And it's also just a beautiful gift because it shows you the difference between living unconsciously between the living consciously and being the creator in your life she gets to see the beautiful duality of two extremes in one lifetime and it will be so incredible she had to go to the very deep deep depths <laughs> of earth um, to see some of the largest traumas of earth so that her spiritual expansion in one lifetime could be so great. Beautiful. And now, is this now healed? Is the healing there complete? And it won't bother her anymore? There will still be a few things, but she is the, she is getting there. It was just, it was a lot and it was for most of her life. So it's not something that can really be healed in one moment, but mm -hmm. she's definitely learning how to release it and just trust more. She has had dreams where she looked a werewolf in the eyes in her dream. And she wants to know, what does that mean? This is an aspect of herself. That is why when she looked the werewolf in the eye, it felt so familiar. And when you say aspect of herself, um, how so? It is also a projection of a key. You. Does she have any connection? It's not related to the band? Yes, it is. So that's what we are showing her right now is that that person that she was telling you about that was an aspect of herself in the same reality oh beautiful she felt that way so that dream was confirming as well how come he hasn't been in any of my dreams but how come he came to me as a werewolf because they're telling me it's because he is projected in this reality to work closer with the darkness and to help. Oh, he shows people the darkness, which is so cool <laughs> because his band is all about like bring awareness to um, different things happening in this world. And so and he has a music video where he turns into a werewolf. So it's like that projection is showing people the darkness on a larger scale. And I'm here to live from love and bring light to people's lives through love. And his is more through emotion and awareness of things going on in the world right now he just does it in a different way so we're gonna connect back with your higher self and we're gonna ask your higher self to perform a body scan and see what's going on in your body is there any areas 
of concern for us to look into? Uh, when you said that, my throat, I felt like a tiny block in my throat. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at your throat chakra. Um, and how does it feel there? They're just saying that I haven't been using my light language. Mm. Okay, so let's, let's tie into this question. <laughs> um, Sierra, for Sierra, how can she align herself to her fullest power? And is that correlating, is her aligning herself to her fullest power connect, in connection with her stepping into her leading role of using her light language? So she wants to know which business should she be putting the most focus into and how she can align herself to her fullest power. Yes, all of her businesses are so beautiful and it's because she has awareness about her where she can attract all different kinds of people so you have been taught in your realities through marketing and things like that of you have to have one certain client avatar that you are attracting but Sierra she works with the higher realms she has learned embodiment and she has learned how to bring and manifest in the 3D reality. And that is what is so beautiful of her businesses is with Anita, she is helping ground people in this reality and work on their spiritual development. Whereas with Carrie, she is helping people connect to their higher guidance She's helping them understand their connection to their stars, uh, to the stars, and open up their multidimensional reality. She just needs, she has this beautiful divine gift that she has mastered through lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes. And she has taught others how to master this as well. And she can create entire realities with her light language. So rather, she's just using the light language in her daily life to help create the reality that she wants. Or she really starts putting into motion a business. So they're showing me like um, posting on TikTok every day my light language to attract light language clients to me to... Uh, I could be a mentor in this life to help people open up their own light language and to work with people monthly to do like light language activations and things like that. Because my light, they're just saying my light language is so powerful that it needs to be shared. That I can have so much fun with all of these different groups and creating and they're so proud of me for what I've created so far. But just don't ever forget about my light language because it's so beautiful and it's so powerful. And that also helps align me to my highest timeline because my highest timeline is light language. And that's why it's so important for me to see this reality for what it truly is. And that's why I've been on an exploration <laughs> to figure out what this reality truly is because my light language creates realities and what belief is holding her back it's the feeling of power the feeling of power is so new to her mm -hmm. it's just a very unfamiliar feeling and she has enjoyed being in her power she has had so much fun stepping into that role um she already knows she is extremely powerful but mm -hmm. her fully being in her power also represents her shedding all of the conditioning all of the beliefs every belief she's ever had that she's not worthy that she's not powerful really stripping those away seeing your true power and then using that power, that light, to get you through the gate. Mm -hmm. So um, earlier we were discussing 
<laughs> um, her question and uh, she made this comment where we were talking about food and she and she said, um, uh, a three D food uh, or something like that. I'm like, well, you know, technically it is it is three D. So in this case, she needs to strip herself from three D beliefs. Basically. Yes, absolutely. Because the beauty of the third dimension is so that you can experience everything that you are not so mm -hmm. when you're fasting when you are shedding away your conditioning of everything that you have been taught in your 3d reality that is bringing you closer to self to your truest being so if you're not eating um, because eating is also a form of separation it's a form of everything that you are not so if you take that time to spiritually connect and come back to self and realize that hunger is only discomfort or just um, a different feeling in your 3D reality, then you are letting go of the beliefs and the conditioning that you've been taught. And so that when she said that, there was no coincidence. It is a three. She is a fasting from her 3D beliefs beautiful so not only is she fasting um she's going on this four-day healing and spiritual fast um so not only is it going to be for her to understand it's okay for me to not have to eat um every meal I can go without eating a meal I can skip a meal but it's also her just shedding the beliefs of of everything that's that she feels maybe holding her back yeah and it, this also has a lot to do with addiction because she has let her mind she let her mind pilot her life her her mind controlled her entire life her body controlled her entire life so we've told her from the very beginning that she has to master her body to master her mind because her body was in control of her entire reality. It was controlling her, her unconscious behaviors as so she was eating and doing things without even consciously realizing what she was doing. And that's why it took her so that's why it took her so much meditation and so much healing work to get where she is now. And that's why she pushes meditation to so many people. Um, she understands that like they have to make that decision to take that meditation practice um, seriously in their own life. But that's why she projects meditation onto so many people is because she saw the true beauty of what it created for her in her life she realized that she's separate from her thoughts and that she has all power over her unconscious behaviors and so this fast for her food is also just another addiction she eats when she doesn't need to eat she eats um she has times where she overeats she has so many beliefs that she's had around food that are just as powerful as the beliefs that she had around her drug addiction. And so by stripping all of this away, she is truly coming back to her. They're showing me the triangle again, like that beautiful mind, body, and spirit balance. Like this final fast is like really bringing the mind, body, and spirit in together. And what does Sierra need to know about the fast she's beginning tomorrow? What does she need to know? Just take care of yourself. Meditate a lot. Do a lot of yoga. Don't lift too heavy. Go for a lot of walks. Spend time in the sun. Do breath work. Just really try and stay in that calm flow. Just that beautiful flow state. Um, the first two days, 
may be the most difficult, but just stay in it and you will truly see how powerful you are. It'll be so beautiful. And is there anything that she can do or start or start doing? Um, or maybe she's already doing it, but she should do more of it to align herself to her fullest power. They said that I can use my own light language to alchemize my emotions. So when I'm going through this fast, if I start to have those thoughts or if I start or if different emotions start coming up to me, just getting more into a trance, a state, a flow state and speaking light language is going to help transmute those emotions. Mm -hmm. And now about the light language and transmitting the emotions is is that also is there more reasons as to why Sierra's throat chakra is um needing attention no they just told me I need to be using it more just mm -hmm. don't forget about my beautiful divine gift okay. and so um is the throat chakra right now is that area all cleared up yeah it's fine Perfect. And now moving down the body, is there anything else that we need to look at? No, everything else feels really good. Mm -hmm. And can we just look at her solar plexus and strengthen her solar plexus? They showed me my solar plexus as like my star energy. Like I have all my star energy in my solar plexus. It's so cool. So from that lifetime as a star? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. And you can definitely tap into that, I'm sure, during your meditation. Yes. All right. And now, besides the throat chakra, was there any other energetic blocks going on in, in Sierra? No, everything else feels really good. And can we take a look at Sierra's neck? Is there anything going on there that we can provide healing for or understanding of? Just a stretching more. It's just because she's been working so much. So her body is out of balance because she's working so much. So it's finding the balance in her own life between working and rest. And we love so much that she's really become the creator in her life. We love so much that... She wants to be in service to others, but also you have to find that balance so that you don't burn out and just really stretching her neck. It's just from like being on the computer all day. So when she starts feeling like tension or unbalanced, that's a sign from her body that she needs to get up and rest and do other things. Yeah, so they're just shining light into my neck. And they're shining light into my back. And why, why, why do you have a lot of tension? How did that originate? The tension in my back is like responsibility. Like I just, I don't know. I've just always felt this overwhelming responsibility over me. Um, I also hold. I'm here to heal a lot of traumatic ancestral trauma <laughs> and I feel a sense of responsibility for that as well and mm -hmm. a lot of it has to do with like it's a lot of the Anunnaki darkness I hold it all in my back and they're just saying like just do breath work they're showing me like go back and do the breath work that Nita did last night with the mm -hmm. intention of relieving this it just the problem with this is like it just feels so big like this darkness is just like so much it feels so much bigger than me <laughs> it's like it's hard to explain I've learned how to work with it a lot more but it does feel like that responsibility is held within my back and so is this something that you are carrying from other lifetimes? No, it's not from other lifetimes. It's from being so invested in the Earth Project. Mm -hmm. 
so like when I made these contracts with different beings I also made a contract with myself that I would come down to earth at this time to help release this darkness and so you feel like you have a responsibility to do that yeah I would say you're doing a very good job <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I've learned how to work with it a lot more, but there are times where it's still, I just feel it and it, I can feel that it's in my back. Mm -hmm. And so um, breath work is something that's going to help you release it. Yeah, breath work would, is incredible for it. And as you step into your power or as you become your most powerful self, I'm sure all of that will go as well. Yeah, and they're also telling me that to remember that I'm not the only one here to heal this, <laughs> that there are <laughs> others here to help me heal this as well. So I don't need to hold on to that individual responsibility. You, it's like you don't need to carry the burden on your back. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, since we were speaking earlier about the aspect of Sierra, does she have any um, other people that she shares an oversoul with that are on Earth? I got the number 55. So 55 people. And has she, has she met most of them? About or? half. Half. Um, does she know who all of the half are? Just a few of who the half are that she met? Just a few, but she has an idea. Mm -hmm. And are they, will she meet all of them in this lifetime? No. Mm -hmm. And is there a reason for that? Just some head are in other parts of the world. Oh, so these 55, when you say the world, do you mean Earth? Like across the, like, pond? Yeah, so it's just 55 on Earth, but then she has other aspects of herself on different planets and things like that. Mm -hmm. And how many aspects in total are there? Mm -hmm. If you look at the Oversoul, there are mm -hmm. many. The Oversoul is very, very big. Interesting. Okay, so she has 55. Um, and then how can she become an even more clear channel? Or is this divine timing? Uh, more meditation because she hasn't been meditating as often. And then also just trusting, just really trusting um, in the information that she's channeling so she still questions herself and she still does it get in her way and the only person the only thing that is blocking her is herself thank you for that and what are her top three attachments in this lifetime and how are they holding her back uh, her beliefs around food. That's why she has been, or she's felt so called to do a fast. And what what would the third attachment be? They said the past or uh, some of my addictions. So just forgiving myself for the things in my addiction. And one of the question um that we'd like to ask her higher self is. Is there anything that Sierra needs to know about Isis and her connection to Isis? So I feel Isis here and she's just like, it feels like she's sending me so much love. I'm seeing her. It's really interesting. I'm actually seeing her as like a blue star being. Just has like these huge wings. And she's holding the moon in her hand. And she's just saying, this is your true power, your conscious mind, and turning your unconscious thoughts into your conscious thoughts is your true power. 
And she's just saying that, of course, we have a connection. And now, um, what does she mean by turn your unconscious thoughts into your conscious thoughts? Becoming aware and studying your reality. Be studying your reality, seeing, making a conscious choice of the things that you do want to see in your reality, and then having the thoughts and the emotions that align you to that reality. And that will turn your unconscious into your conscious reality. So you have to study and become the scientist of your reality you have to bring the unconscious into the conscious so like alchemy absolutely Mm -hmm. it's this is all alchemizing your reality through consciousness so we are so proud of her we are so excited for her She truly can have whatever reality, whatever experience she wants to have. It is just truly believing it.